there's never been a better time to have Sirius XM. With over 140 channels in your vehicle, your all-access trial includes more than ever before to enjoy online, on your phone, or at home. Create your own ad-free personalized station powered by Pandora. Hear ad-free extra channels and enjoy favorite shows with Sirius XM Video On Demand. What you love is on now. Hey guys, what's going on? Thanks for tuning in on this Friday for another lunchtime learning session. I'm your host, Ben Wu, for another episode of CMA Connected, presented by Sirius XM. Um, so to round out this week, you know, we've had some really, really cool episodes on CMA Live talking about all the different big segments. Um, and we're going to circle back to one that uh, this particular brand has really made a name for itself in, and that is, of course, Marine Audio and Exile Audio is the brand. Um, in Canada, distributed exclusively by Trends Electronics. So when we've got Trends on, I got to have my man G-Money, Grant McFadder, coming on the show with me. What's going on, Gr Really? That's how we're going to start the show today? <laughs> Sorry, man. It's uh, Canada. It's uh, You can't drink all day if you don't start in the morning. And it is lunchtime somewhere in Canada. <clears throat> oh, that was good. A little Listerine start off but, in the morning. But but you know what? It, it, aren't you in BC? And that's like, was it 9 a.m.? It's 9 a.m., buddy. That's like I said, you can't drink all day if you don't start in the morning. <laughs> Very best. Um, it's actually Exile Pepsi Audio. with water. It is yeah, Pepsi Exile. With water. Uh, <laughs> Exile Audio. Um, I want to start by maybe giving the folks tuning in, the dealers who, you know, kind of maybe the, the, the brand might ring a bell and maybe they haven't seen it in Canada for a while. So it is indeed a return to the Canadian market, isn't it? Absolutely. Yeah, we uh, well, actually when I first started with Trends, uh, it was one of the first lines that they brought in uh, back in 2004. I think uh, I started right in February and they were talking about it when I came on. Uh, they saw it at CES the year before or that year and they were bringing it in. It was a car audio product at, at the time. And uh, we had a good, I think probably a four year run on the car audio side of things. And then uh, they saw a trend in the market where um, a lot of their products were being used on, in boats because really, you know, 2006, 2008-ish, there was no real um, higher end marine product offering. You know, there was kind of a, an entry level offering, but nothing really crazy. So they were, they were, these amps were finding their ways into boats. So um, they get they transitioned over to the marine audio side in a pretty big way, and you know, exited car audio for a bit. And um, yeah, I mean, they made a big splash in the marine side of things. They even had some OEM contracts with uh, MB Sport, which is a big thing when you're getting on with a, uh, a large wakeboard manufacturer. So it speaks loudly of uh, the quality of your product. I know that we had a chance to um, kind of go over an overview of the brand um, back during industry week. Uh, I thought this would be a great idea uh, to do a deeper dive. So if we're going to do a deeper dive, and I said we got to bring the man on himself, right? Why don't I let gotcha. you introduce him? Yeah, uh, one of the uh, founding guys from, uh, you know, we, we knew him from our Phoenix Gold days back in those, those early uh, late 90s and early 2000s, but uh, Bill Hasbrook. Uh, one of the chief engineers and definitely the guy that behind the the Exile brand at the moment for sure. He's he's a, he's a he's a pretty whiz guy. So happy to have uh, Bill on, and he he knows more about the product than we ever will for sure. Well, welcome to CMA Hello. Connected, Bill. Yeah, good to How be here. You? I'm thanks doing for, great. Thanks for coming <laughs> back. You, you know, uh, Grant kind of introduced you from the Phoenix Gold uh, pedigree that you have. And I thought this would be a fun fact. I, I had a chance to ask, but I said, Bill, you know, when you were at Phoenix Gold, you know, what was your, your claim to fame? And, and you know, you, he dropped, he said, well, man, I was behind the Cyclone sub. Man, yeah, for you guys very... listening, do you, does anybody remember the Cyclone sub? <laughs> yeah, the Cyclone was my first project at Phoenix Gold. It's actually the project that... Uh encouraged me to call up Phoenix Gold and see if there was any opportunities there because I met a guy at a bar that was holding this part that looked like it was from a washing machine. And he was actually the, the person that was tooling the helix that goes inside of the, uh, the cyclone. And I was looking at that part and got to talking with him and he's like, this goes in a speaker. And I remember looking at it going, how in the heck does this go into a speaker? It seriously looked like a part from a washing machine. And I knew Phoenix Gold. I'd been a I was young and had Phoenix Gold car audio in my car. 
And so I made a cold call to Phoenix Gold, and I'm like, you know, I'm an electrical acoustical engineer. I'm passionate about this stuff. Um, I hear you have a pretty cool project going on. I'd like to come in and, you know, talk to somebody. And that's how I got my foot in the door was actually seeing wow. a heart from the cyclone in a bar. A yeah, small oh, world, yes. And that's so, a great uh, story. Yeah, that was my uh, that was my foot in the door at, at Phoenix Gold, and uh, actually, it set my career on a different path because I think the first project I ever worked on was with the Cyclone, and just thinking about how to make sound in a different way. So I've always approached um, creating a product by a little bit of form out of function. Sometimes uh, a product will take its form just by the the engineering properties that it has but also making it beautiful along the way. And, you know, with the Cyclone being a completely outside of the box um, concept of how to make sound from the very beginning, I think it kind of, that's where I started my, my design career in audio products. And I've tried to carry that through with everything we've done of being completely innovative and just kind of disregarding what, how it's been done in the past and trying to really keep the sound engineering practices, but just really try to make it look beautiful and make it, uh, make it perform in a way that, you know, hasn't necessarily been done before. And that's from kind of the creativity that I learned at Phoenix School. It's a great opportunity. I'll tell you, I mean, and I really want to start with that um, grant because I wanted the, the Canadian dealers to understand that the people behind this Exile brand have, you know, a, a pedigree and a lineage within the industry that has led them to this. There's there's design, there's engineering. This is not just a stick on, a, you know, a sticker slap on type of brand here. And I hope that yeah. with this session, we're going to get into it a little bit about you know, what Exile is all about, the claim to fame, what you guys have really uh, found some, which categories you found some success in, and maybe um, share with us a little bit of the details as to why people love the product um, that, that is out there right now through the Excel brand. So I don't know where you want to start, Grant, but I'm going to kind of let you steer the steer the ship, if, if you will. Well, I think, uh, I mean, the, the probably the, the most recognizable product they have under the Exile brand is probably their tower speaker product. Um, so there's a uh, there's two different versions they have. There's the XM9, which is a horn loaded compression driver, and then they have an SXT9Q. <clears throat> uh, both look very similar, but uh, Bill Bill can tell you more about the XM9 than I can. I mean, I, I'm a sales guy. He's a he's the guy that built this thing. <clears throat> yeah, the XM9 got one here. The XM9 was. Um, one of our first products that we designed from the ground up to really address um, the, the marine side of the market. At the time, about, uh, I think it was 2008, we really started to look at marine, um, as Grant had talked about earlier. A lot of our car audio product was being used in marine. Power speakers back then usually were a set of car audio components and tweeters stuffed into an aluminum can. And it was kind of retrofitted car audio equipment for a boat. The problem is, is a boat is a completely different environment than a car is because you don't have a cabin. So when we design a set of components or a speaker to work inside of a car, we're taking into account the cabin gain of the vehicle. And that really shapes the way the speakers sound inside of a car. Um, you have to have a good sound coming out of the speakers, but you also have to compensate for what's happening in the cabin of the uh, vehicle. In a boat, it's more like pro sound. It's more like sound reinforcement because it's a completely open space. So the product has to be designed different to be able to act more like a point source to where what's coming out of the speaker sounds good at close, vol at close distances, but also projects its same uh, voicing as you get further and further away from the speaker itself. So in that open air environment, we really had to use more professional techniques for designing product than we would for car audio. So one of our, our first products that we addressed were power speakers. Power speakers at the time, like I said, were mainly components shoved into a can and hung off of the power. So we really started from scratch to develop the speaker, not using any off-the-shelf parts. Um, designing it to one of the main things that we wanted was what we call hang height. So where the speaker actually mounts, this is the mount that goes up on the tower of the boat. We wanted the distance from where it mounts in the boat, the bottom of the speaker to be the minimal amount of space it needs to actually fit the largest driver in it. And the way we did that is we actually tooled um, this outside bezel here is actually the basket of the speaker itself. So we're able to take the surround and push it all the way to the furthest outside edge, which gives us a very small lip around the outside. So we're able to fit what is we're calling a nine inch glass speaker because it's got more cone area than your traditional eight inch. A nine inch speaker doesn't really exist. So this is as far as surface area, a little bit larger than an eight inch speaker. So we call it a, a nine inch driver, um, maximizing that cone area while minimizing the hang heights. So you're not always hitting your head when you're 
these are hanging from your tower. Um, did two different versions of it. This is the uh, compression horn loaded driver here. So what we've done is we've coincidentally mounted the compression driver behind the mid range. And then we use this horn throat to actually bring that sound from the compression driver out. And so by the time the sound coming up the mid, the sound coming off of the loaded horn here, mix um, about two or three feet outside of the speaker, they sound like what we intend to sound like. So the, the horn loaded driver is designed to really project sound, you know, 15, 20 to 30 feet behind the boat. So this is what we call a wakeboarding, wake, uh, wake style speaker. It's really designed to project that sound far behind the boat. We also do the SXT 9Q, which is the same mid-range driver. It's the same exact everything, except for the horn is replaced with a 25 millimeter uh, titanium dome uh, tweeter that we've actually designed to have that coupled very close to the speaker. So it actually is designed to project its full voicing, you know, 10 to 20 feet behind the boat. So if you're surfing, you've really got the sound state. You've got the voicing of the speaker right there where you're surfing. And then a lot of people will do what we call a hybrid, where they use one of our surf speakers and they use one of our wakeboard speakers to kind of give you the best of both worlds. And that works really well because both the mid-ranges are exactly the same. So you're getting that good mid-range coupling between all four speakers all the way back at 20 feet and all the way back at 40 feet. And then the tweeter just kind of takes over in the near field and the horn takes over in the uh, farther projection and that part of the uh, power response. And that's what gives you, you know, kind of a nice sound in all different locations. I pulled, a, I pulled the driver out of the can to show you what's inside because uh, there's other people that, uh, you know, claim to have a horn-loaded compression driver, but it's just a horn-loaded tweeter. Uh, this is not your average speaker, as you can tell by the girth of that speaker. Uh, we actually have the horn-loaded horn uh, compression driver on the back. So, yeah, this thing is a beast. It's, you know... I don't know what the actual decibel rating is. It's probably close to about 100 dB at 80 yeah. feet back is what we're, what we're get looking for when you're wakeboarding. So definitely, I think that one of the important things um, between the XM9 and the SXT is qualifying your customer from a dealer standpoint on what your customer does because you definitely don't want to sell him an SXT9 if he's a wakeboarder or he's towing the kids at 60, 80 feet back. You definitely want to give him that, uh, the XM9 experience for that. Or like Bill was saying, do a hybrid, you know, two pairs of XM9s and two pairs of uh, well, SXT9s. If I can interject here, I think that you, sure. you're on to something. You know, we, um, we're talking about the best customer experience. You know, you have them in, in the store. You want to demo the product, let them hear it. I mean, how great would it be to have that A-B switch to be able to show them the difference about the different engineered products to have that near field and that further reach with the compression driver and explain to them that these are, you know, specifically produced and engineered depending on what your needs are. And here's why, bing, bing, you know, show them the AB, they would totally get it. Absolutely. Exactly. Yeah, mm -hmm. and if your showroom's large enough, have the customer step back further, as far yeah, away from the keep going. as they yeah. can. Yeah. And really yeah. start to hear, at a, you know, about that 15, 20 foot of range, you're gonna hear this compression horn driver really kind of come into its own voicing as you get further back. And then when you, if, if you've got a set of surfs on there, you can do the same thing as listen to how um, the surf sound up close and ABM against this, and they're two completely different experiences. Now, I, I read somewhere, maybe Grant was telling me that there is a unique feature about the um, the bracket by which you could turn it yes. around. Why don't you tell us yes, about so, that? Um, we have a patented design here which uh, allows the speaker to not only be quick disconnect, it also allows it to continuously rotate 360 degrees. So how this works is we have an audio jack here in the center of the top of the speaker, and then we have, this is what we call um the, the the speaker side jack here so this is basically just the cylindrical mount um on the speaker and then on the boat side we have a post that also has a speaker jack in. so this is what mounts up on top of the boat and so to mount the speaker onto the boat you simply push the speaker on and it clicks into place and now it's locked in so on the back of the speaker here is a plunge pin this pin is what's keeping the speaker from falling off of its rotational axis but it's still completely able to uh, freely rotate. By pulling this pin, it releases that, and you can take the speaker off the boat. So to mount the speaker, you basically lock it into a lock pin, find the angle that you want, and then we have a brake mechanism here that you pull closed. And once you pull that brake mechanism closed, then the, the clamp won't move. So the nice that, thing about this is 
is for on a boat and also we're getting a lot of use of these on side by sides now where they'll mount them on the tower of the boat or the mount yeah, on the boat exactly. roll cage of the side by side and when they're riding they'll actually pull the speaker so it's it's facing in towards the boat or towards the driver in a side by side and then when you're hanging out at camp or you have a, a wakeboarder or some tubers on the back and they want maximum sound in the back you can just rotate the speaker back there relock it hmm. and then it's ready to go so it's a very unique feature. It never cuts out 360 degrees. There's no wires in there to tangle. Um, it also helps on, on boats now that aren't just tubular based where you're mounting them on the side of a boat like this, where you're mounting it on the side of a boat. Um, this allows you to get the angle of the tower. So if this is mounting at a strange angle, you're able to match this to the angle of the, of the boat. And even if you want to compensate for the bow coming up when you're first accelerating, you can even give it a little bit of an upward or downward tilt. So you're free to do this um, anytime you want. Also, another feature is by loosening these four outside support uh, corners here, the grill completely rotates in any orientation you want. So if you've got speakers mounted on the side of the boat, you can rotate these grills so that all the logos and all the grills line up at the whatever strange angle the speaker is being mounted on on the boat. So this, but, uh, this Bill, has been, I you know... I I, I, I gotta say, I've uh, I've sat in a lot of trainings for different speakers of this category, and that is a very unique feature because many of them, you know, they, they have the Deutsch connectors and all that, but they are separate from the rotation point. So, in other words, if you're right. going to twist them, the cable goes with it. Um, that right. design is quite clever, and I think that's a major selling point. Grant, I'm sure you've had some good feedback on that. Yeah, no, it's it's awesome when they like it's, like Bill was saying when you're wakeboarding the speakers are typically firing backwards and then when you get to the campground or get back to your the cabin you can quickly rotate them and the party's now on the beach so it's an awesome feature. Um, nice. Also on the uh, when you're towing the boat long distances if you're driving down the highway for three four hours um, it's a good idea to take them off while you're towing them. Um, you know so maybe they don't launch oh. off the back, back of the boat or <laughs> the. Uh, I, I what, I guess could that be a security feature as well, almost like a faceplate? Well, exactly. Definitely a security yeah. feature when you when you're parked at the lake. You know, you come back in the morning after a night of drinking. You come back and someone's decided to enjoy your uh, eighteen hundred dollar tower speakers because you left them on the boat. So it's a good idea to quick disconnect them and, and take them inside the, the truck or the cabin or the tent wherever you are. So good idea. Yeah, nice. We also have, we also have bags for these, so you can take them out. It's a fleece lined bag. Um, speaker drops in there. It gives you some nice handles to carry them around. We really do encourage people to utilize this quick disconnect. Um, a lot of people that have bought used boats with our product on it will call up and say, you know, um, I want to know a little bit more about the speaker. Like they'll maybe send them in, have you go through and refurbish them. How do I take them off? A lot of customers that didn't buy the speaker originally um, didn't realize that the speakers were quick disconnect and came off the boat. And once we uh, explained to them how it works, they were like, this is the greatest thing I've ever seen. Um, especially uh, for like wintertime storage, if you're storing your boat outside where it's getting a lot of garbage on it all winter long, take the speakers off, put them in the bag, bring them in the house. When you're ready to go next spring, the speaker hasn't been sitting out all winter and you don't have spider nests and garbage that's gotten down in it. So it allows you to keep the speaker much cleaner and it won't, uh, it won't have that traditional dirty spring look that the rest of your boat is going to have. Very rest. Very cool. All right. Um, one That's other feature of this quick this one other feature of this quick disconnect is this post um, is able to mount on multiple different uh, locations. So this is what we sell for your traditional tube tower. Where a lot of towers now have a combination of machined aluminum parts and then small tubes. So if you're mounting on a tube, this is our stainless steel aluminum <laughs> clamp that works from uh, two inch to three inch, any, any tube this will mount in. We also have a mini version of it that goes from one and a quarter inch up to two inch. If you're mounting on like the cage of a side-by-side, -side, we have a smaller version of this clamp. But the other benefit of that is a lot of boats that don't have tubes, uh, tube power on them, um, we make in-house, we have the ability to CNC machine and we do all of our own um, industrial design. So we can do all the 3D design on a new boat mount very quickly. So here's an example of, uh, of a Nautique mount, which is very complicated. So this goes up onto the factory mount on a Nautique. And then this is uh, our post here. So this gives you a, a custom mount to be able to put our speakers on the boat um, and still maintain all of the quick disconnect, but have it have a factory integrated look. So by having this post that can mount on, you know, I think we have 25 or 30 different mounts now for different style boats. It gives you the flexibility to do a custom install without having to just find a place to put the regular tube um, clamp on. 
Uh, that just tells me that you guys take this really seriously. When you're getting into all the different adapters and have be able to have that flush OE look, yeah, yes, that's uh, certainly something to consider. Very, very nice. Yeah, you have to you have to do it a, a product of this caliber. Um, it, everything has to be custom. Uh, we have a lot of DIY customers out there, so we want it to be easy for them. But we also want it to be easy for the dealers to where um, they know what the boat is, what the gear is. They can order the parts that go specifically on that boat. And they're able to install it very quickly. And the customer's you know, super happy because it looks like a completely custom fabricated install. And all you did was bolt some adapters onto the boat. Yeah, but so that, makes you, that makes you look great. That's, that's, that's all what we want, it. yeah. yeah We're absolutely. all about the customer experience and the dealer experience, though. So. All right. So that's... Next. That's, That's what we're the, on the tower speaker. What do we want to go these to next in the catalog? White and black also, right? These are available white, white and black. All right. I think we stay on speakers. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> I might need some more Listerine. Mm -hmm. um, the um, the other the other most important one of the other important parts is the inboat speakers as well. We have two different options. Uh, for the inboat, so this is the picture of the uh, the SX eighty M, which is the eight inch. Uh, driver, <coughs> excuse me. Here is a uh, close up of the speaker. Again, this is not a you know off the shelf piece. It's custom tooled for the XL brand. You know, significantly increased power handling, and we have these in six inch and eight inch. And uh, Bill can talk about some of the acoustic characteristics of the speakers they've done. Again, it's not just a it's not a car audio speaker with a white grill on it, and especially not right, just so a white grill either. The SX80, 8 inch has become kind of an 86 and a half inch for boats. Almost all of the newer boats have gone to an 8 inch. It's rare to see a newer boat with a 6 and a half in it. So that has become the industry standard size for, um, for marine use is that 8 inch size. So what we did when we developed our 8 inch cabin speaker is it's basically, think of it as the same. If you look at it, it looks very similar to the mid-range design that we did on the tower speaker. So it's got the, it's got the, speaker built right into the actual basket itself there is no uh there the basket and the bezel and the grill are all built into one part um it also has very similar sonic characteristics to what our tower speakers have so when you put a system in with the eight inch in cabins and you know our nine inch tower speakers the whole characteristic of the mid bass response inside of a boat is very similar the tweeter used on the cabin speakers is the same tweeter that we use on our surf speaker so if you're riding behind the boat or you're inside of the boat, that same voicing carries out throughout the whole uh, sound system. We also design these speakers um, to work in a free air environment. So they really are optimized to be like a pro sound speaker. So they've got incredible amounts of mid bass. Even though it's an eight inch driver, it's not an eight inch subwoofer. It's designed to give you um, amazing mid bass down to lowest, you know, where, where I'm really comfortable driving that speaker with big power is probably 60 Hertz. We usually recommend crossing it over at 80, rolling your subwoofer between 80 and 90 into into those speakers, and really let those 8 inch mid bases just give you that that open air mid bass performance because that's what makes a boat fun to listen to. When you've got that mid bass kicking you in the face, that's what makes the experience really really enjoyable. Quick note on the six and a half inch speaker: um, it's a six and a half inch coax. How excited could you get about that? Um, it is it is a unique design. We designed it specifically for marine use. Um, we have a custom basket that we designed on that that is very thin and allows you to mount a six and a half inch or what we call 165 millimeter traditional car audio size in a 160 millimeter or a traditional six inch hole. Marine, unlike uh, car, kind of rotate uh, gravitated towards the six inch size instead of the six and a half. So with our speaker, you're able to pull out any six and a half that you have in a boat and our speaker will actually drop right into that hole without having to make the hole larger for a traditional car audio six and a half inch speaker but the outside diameter is a six and a half so it's kind of a hybrid between those two sizes yeah my takeaway from that is i, I do appreciate you know when you're when, when you have a system that's tonally matched yes when everything's installed it just makes sense especially when you're kind of going from different zones you know in marine you could and I think we're going to go into multi zones in a bit, but yeah, you definitely want to have that match tonality. It makes a you know, big difference at the overall once it's all set up. So very yeah, cool. and, and then you don't require any equalization to try to make one zone sound good. Any equalization you might apply to one zone is going to affect another zone. <laughs> You've got the same voicing across the entire system. Any changes you make then are going to be system wide because the voicing of the entire system is, is consistent. Yeah, very cool. Okay. 
Mr. Grant. Well, one of the most important things you need to make it all sound good is power, more power. More power. So we got an image here. That's what we're looking at right there. Yeah, so I'm holding up the XM302, which is the uh, one we recommend for the tower speakers. It's 300 watts RMS by two. Uh, the one on the slide is one of the most popular amplifiers in the whole lineup called the Javelin, which is a, a, four cha a five channel amplifier, four channels of stereo operation and a very, very awesome 800 watt RMS mono channel, which is kick ass on a five channel for sure. But they've done a lot of work in these over the years. Um, you know, they use a uh, five layer epoxy circuit boards. They use all stainless hardware throughout it. Of course, uh, conformal coated circuit boards. Uh, they even do a lot of extra work on the heat sink. They're using 9.8 grams of aluminum per millimeter, making it the surface area uh, dissipate the heat a lot better. So really a lot of attention to detail that you don't physically see on the amplifier by looking at it. But, you know, Bill being the engineer that he is, it's a lot of stuff that you don't see that makes a difference. Uh, but this is, you know, quite a compact amplifier, you know, not zooming in on it, but 300 watts by 2 RMS. Uh, I believe it's 800 bridge, Bill, 800 watts RMS bridge. Yeah, it's not really. So what's unique about that amplifier is that amplifier is specifically designed to run power speakers. In fact, it is, it is uh, permanently locked in high pass mode. So there is no low pass mode on that amplifier. Um, reason we did that is we were seeing a lot of people that, you know, they mount a nine inch speaker on their tower. They think they have nine inch subwoofers on their tower at the same mm -hmm. time. They were taking our tower amplifier. They were running them full range and applying a, a bunch of bass boost at 45 Hertz. And they're, you know, just me mechanically fatiguing the drivers because, um, these are big amplifiers. Uh, we like to put large amplifiers on tower speakers because it really gives you a lot of dynamic range. And it gives you that that transient peak to hit those mid bass notes. And that's what makes the system fun to listen to. You're never going to be able to clip it because you have so much headroom in the amplifier. The downside of that is that if you run these full range, you put a bunch of bass boost. This is, you know, our tower speaker is not a subwoofer. It's designed to do, uh, it's designed to be a full range, uh, lower mid bass type of uh, driver. So our tower amplifier, we locked into high pass mode. The lowest you can go on that on that tower amplifier is 60 hertz. So it really helps for the customer. You know, you dial it all in. We even have covers that we put over all of the controls now. It's frustrating. If, if you completely dial the system in, you've got it tuned where you know they're going to, whatever music they're playing to, they're not going to be able to hurt the system. Uh, somebody gets in the boat that see, you know, thinks they know more than whoever installed it. They get in there, they turn all the gains up, they put it in full range, and they're like, hey, listen how good that sound. And, you know, we end up, uh, speakers end up getting mechanically uh, damaged by just driving them outside of their operating, their safe operating region. So that's why that is a specific power amplifier. Um, Exile's approach over the last couple of years is to sell systems. We really have an Exile uh, ecosystem for marine audio that we know works. So that's why we really haven't tried to be all things to all people. We really kind of focused on marine systems and that 30.2 is a tower amplifier. And it works amazing on pow on uh, any tower speaker and designed specifically to do that. Um, the Javelin, again, it's all part of our, our ecosystem here. This is a five channel amplifier. Think of this as your cabin amplifier. So we've got a tower amplifier at 30.2. The Javelin is a five channel amp for running your um, cabin speakers. So you'd run the rears to the usually two pair in the back of a boat. Um, you run the front to usually one pair. Some boats have two pairs in the front. So um, you can load all the channels down to two ohms. So the, the full range part of the four channel amp in this is going to run all of your cabins. And then this also has a mono block built into it. So it actually is two amplifiers in one housing. And then that mono block amplifier is for running your subwoofer. So we've got all of your high pass, low pass functions on the amplifier to be able to really dial in a, um, a, a systems approach. We've even put little tick marks in the silk screen that shows you where to set the gains on all of the amplifiers for what we call our reference system that we've you know done thousands of them out in the, the field so by setting all of the gains with the tick marks when using our um preamp all of the gains will be set correctly you don't even have to think about it you can just go in set them all uh install the system especially if you set them all before you mount the app because sometimes it's hard to get to those uh controls after you've mounted the amplifier and then we have a cover over um um, all of the controls so the customer can't get to them. 
Another thing that's unique about our amplifier is we have the ability to do a um, balanced and an unbalanced input on it. So a differential signal versus a single-ended signal. Um, a lot of boats, if you're doing OEM integration, a lot of boats now actually have a head unit that has a differential audio out on it, which means the ground is actually floating. So it's actually sending a positive phase on one pin and a negative phase, 180 degrees out of phase on the other to the amplifier. And what happens at the amplifier is it inverts the phase of one side of it. And also when it's inverting the phase, it's canceling out all of the noise in the system. So it's kind of a low noise uh, integration. Head units that have a differential output, if you plug them into a traditional amplifier that has a grounded shield on it, eventually that head unit will go into protect. So all of our amplifiers now, there's a switch, there's a button on here for each channel. So front channel, rear channel, and subwoofer has a button to put it in differential mode or to put it in single-ended mode. Um, we found it works better because of the way we wanted to do our ground isolation to actually have it be selectable. Um, there are some amplifiers that have a differential input that you can ground one side of it and it doesn't map, it doesn't mind it. We found better noise rejection by actually selecting if you want a differential in or not. And this really helps you to do an OEM integration and also cut down on the noise in the system. Another thing that we use on all of our amplifiers, we call it a Tiffany connector. I don't know why it's called a Tiffany. We've called it all the way back to the Phoenix Gold days. We always called these Tiffany uh, RCA connectors um, where they have an actual threaded barrel around. Um, this really works well in a boat because it's, this is a fatigue point for failure in a boat where you've got this mounted and you've got RCAs that are draping off of it. And as the boat is hitting, it's pulling on these RCA connectors and you'll see the, the solder joint at the PCB break. By having a Tiffany connector on there, you're actually putting all of that force into the in plate of the amplifier. And that keeps, that just makes the systems more reliable in the long run and just takes away from that fatigue of pulling on the RCA. Connectors. I mean, not even all the way to our, uh, e, all the way to our preamp EQ. We actually use Tiffany connectors on these because you can imagine eight sets of RCAs hanging off the back of this, and as you're pounding on a boat, it's really pulling on those RCA connectors. So that's why we've gone to, um, that's why we've gone to that style of RCA connection. Another and thing to note on our amp yep. One more thing on our amplifiers is we no longer use switches on any of them. All of our amplifiers have gone through a sealed rotary pot. So if you were going two channel, four channel, six channel, it's actually a sealed rotary selector switch as opposed to a slider one. Um, the slider ones, there's really no way to totally seal those off. So you get condensation and oxidation over the years of a boat being in storage um, and being in a rough environment. So by going to the removing all of the actual slider switches and going to this rotary style military sealed connector, um, it really makes the amplifier much more reliable in the long term. So many little details. Yes. Yeah, we have two, there's two other amplifiers in the, uh, the family as well. There's an XM154, which is a 150 watt four channel amplifier. Then we have the, uh, for our friends that like a little bit more SPL, we have the XM151, which is a 1500 watt uh, monoblock. watt monoblock. Yeah. That's, That's uh, what we need. Well, I'm sure you need, but what about subwoofers to, to power? Uh, we'll Absolutely. get to that. I just want to touch one thing on amplifiers because uh, the industry is seeing a, a shortage in amplifiers right now because oh, yeah. of the uh, there's a lot of there's a lot of problems with uh, chipsets. It's not only the uh, the 12 volt industry. You're seeing it in car manufacturing and everything else. Anything that needs a, any kind of computer chip. Uh, so one of the things that's uh, really cool with with the Exile when we partnered up with them was we did a lot of booking uh, before there was a problem. So we're actually going to have a swack of amplifiers here. Uh, I believe the U.S. guys are getting their shipment uh, next week or the week after. We've got some air stuff coming in on the Javelins and XM154s next week. Uh, and then right behind it, we have an ocean shipment with a lot of inventory. So uh, we will have a lot of marine grade amplifiers for anyone that does, does not have an amplifier. We can probably help you out. Uh, but yeah, uh, speaking of subwoofers, I have to go to the gym a little bit and lift this guy up. Yeah, <clears throat> the XI-12D. Yeah, so this is... Uh, the original design from day one, but if it ha isn't broken, don't fix it. This thing, everyone that's had these subwoofers in the past, just know they absolutely perform. Uh, cast basket driver, double stack magnet. Um, I'll let Bill talk about the X in the back, because that's one of the best things about the cooling of it, and that's why they last so long. 
is they don't burn up. And uh, as we know, some of our friends in car audio and marine like to turn the volume up past uh, clipping on the amplifier side. But these are super reliable, really robust, gorgeous looking subwoofer. And like I said, I mean, they just don't break. It just they hammer 600 watts RMS power handling. It's a beast. Bill, you yeah, can talk about some of the, uh, the technical X stuff on it. Yeah, yeah. the XI-12 has been in our lineup. It's had multiple different names. Um, it's, it's one of the first products we brought out in 2004. And we just continued to it, it integrate on it, um, iterative changes to it over the years. Uh, it's just one of those do-all woofers. It's the Swiss Army knife of 12-inch subwoofers. It'll work in a seal box. It'll work in a vented box. We, you can even run it free air if you've got some subsonic filtering on the amp that you can kind of reduce some of that really low frequency excursion. Um, takes a ton of power. Uh, we only sell it in a dual voice coil because in, in our applications, that was what works best. The backside of a Javelin wants a two-ohm load. So you can hang um, one dual voice coil off the back of this. Our 15.4 uh, will run into a one-ohm load. So you can put two of the XI-12s up 15.4. Um, and it'll take that power all day long. Uh, that that woofer has been super reliable, super flexible, great sound quality. Um, and it also, we've spent a lot of time on the cooling on it. Um, if you look at, we've got the magnet boot on the back. The magnet boot is, is part of its cosmetics. We like the way it looks. We've always done um, industrial design in the back of speakers just as much as we do on the front. Even though when it's mounted in an enclosure, you don't see it. But we do feel when it's sitting on a showroom floor, that attention to the detail does shine through. If you're showing that to a customer, you say you can, you can tell that attention to detail on this speaker, you know, goes 360 degrees around the product. Um, that X in the back is actually it's actually a vent. Um, it, it, if you look on the back of the um, magnet boot there, that's where the uh, that's where the full piece actually vents. And we've got a getting a workout lifting this thing piece. up. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so that's where the speaker actually vents, and we've got some. Uh, We've got some mesh that's in there that actually creates turbulence. And we've actually found that that actually increases our power handling because um, what happens is that air is being pumped in and out as the cone moves. Um, going in and out of that mesh, we've actually found that, it, that having a little bit of restrictive uh, opening there actually creates some turbulence that actually forces some air down around the voice coil through the top plate and around the gap and actually helps the convection cool the voice coil a little bit better than if we were to give it completely open air. We found that by venting the basket and restrictively venting the pull piece, we're actually able to force some air into an, into areas that it's kind of hard to get air into. So it's kind of counterintuitive to think that by restricting some airflow in, in, in certain areas would improve power handling. But, you know, when you've been selling a woofer for Whoa. 12 years, you have, you have time to, to iteratively figure these things out. <laughs> well, first of all, I see that Grand is working up a sweat. Second of all, here's my input on, on what you just uh, mentioned there about the restrictive airflow. You know, if you look at some of the high-performance exhaust systems on sports cars, they purposely put baffles in there to restrict airflow to increase back pressure. Yeah. Back pressure, uh, absolutely. It's very so similar. Similar to that, I would say. Yeah, see, it, I can be sort of smart like too, that. Grant. I can be yeah. sort of smart. Smarter than me, buddy. You're smarter than me. <laughs> uh, but either way, that that sub looks like an absolute beast it's a shame that most of it isn't seen once it's installed but you're absolutely right at the moment of sale you put that in the customer's hands and you say yeah. all those great features that you just mentioned that's all part of you know stepping up the customer so it's great and that's about and another 35, option that we, 35 pounds we have for that right there right? <laughs> yeah imagine two of those in a two of those in a master pack and loading an entire container of those you are done by the end of the day that's for sure Very those, cool. those are the most cumbersome boxes um, we also have a grill available for that. You can buy it without or with the grill. It's a uh, um, injection molded plastic grill that matches the cosmetics of the power speakers. So when you when you put it into a system, all of your cabin speakers, the industrial design we call our design language, our Exile design language is carried through all of the products. Um, in fact, when we developed the logo, you see the logo on my shirt, um, where these parts land, uh, the, the parts in the X are actually designed to land at specific points where you would have a mounting hole or you would have um, a cosmetic feature on a speaker. So when we put our logo onto a product, the logo actually lands in the right places to be able to design products that doesn't look like we just pop the logo on it. So oh, some of that attention cool. to detail went all the way back to our original 
um, industrial design and brand development of the uh, of the logo itself. Cool. Um, um, multi zone control. control. Awesome. How about that? Yes. So part of our systems approach, uh, we don't have a large catalog of product. Like I said, we, we really focus on selling systems and every product that's in our lineup really goes towards selling a system. So we kind of, we started at the tower, we've worked into what we call the middle of the system, which is your amplifiers. And now we're gonna look upstream from our amplifiers. How are you getting sound into the amplifier? So one of our key products that's really, um, been a huge success for us and really makes a huge difference in the way that your system is going to perform is what we call our ZLD. ZLD stands for a zoned line driver. This is actually developed originally to be a line driver with a volume. Um, the problem is when you get these big systems that vote, especially if you're, if you're tapping into the factory integration, is most of the factory stereos have push button volumes. And a push button volume is really hard to use when you're pulling a, a rider and they fall. You've got the stereo on full blast while they're riding, but when they fall, you want to bring the sound down really quickly so you can talk to them, you can turn around, you can be safe, make sure that you've got good communication. Be able to go in and quickly turn down the stereo with a push button, uh, a push button stereo is really hard to do. So one of the key features when we developed this is we wanted a good old fashioned high end preamp volume knob. So it's a it's a um, it's a turned aluminum anodized black aluminum knob that allows you to just immediately turn the system up and down. It's got a nice feel to it, um, very smooth as you turn it up and down, and it just allows you to get the volume of the system where you want it immediately, all in one knob. So this one knob controls three different zones simultaneously. It's controlling your tower zone, and we have a separate volume control for tower, so this you can set the tower um, ratio anywhere you want by using the tower zone here. We've got a cabin zone. You can turn the cabins anywhere you want. We do recommend you run the system with the cabin zone turned all the way up and then use the cabin zone as your reference. So if you want tower speakers to come on, you want to turn the tower speakers up into where they've got a nice blend with the cabin speakers. Same thing with subwoofer. We've got a knob here for subwoofer volume. We also added a knob for subwoofer low pass filter. Um, this is a huge benefit in a boat, specifically when you're listening to different types of music. If you're listening to old or classic rock and that doesn't have a lot of bass in it, you know, you're probably going to be turning the bass all the way up. And sometimes you actually are going to want to bring the crossover frequency up a little bit on, on music that has, you know, a little bit more punchy to your bass or bass that doesn't, isn't mixed as loud as it is in current music. So by turning that crossover frequency up, you put a little bit more of the upper sub bass, lower mid bass into the subwoofer. And because you have so much going on in a system, it's not like in a car where you're trying to hide the sub where you want to cross over 80 hertz so that it disappears in the back. In a boat, you can go up to, I mean, some systems, if you can go up to 120 hertz and not be able to localize the subwoofer in a boat uh, environment because you've got so much other sound going on in the system, and that can really bring some mid bass out. So that's why it's nice to have the crossover control on here so that depending on the music you're listening to, you've got full control of it. We also have a subwoofer phase button here. What this does is this inverts the phase of the subwoofer. It's the same thing if you went to the subwoofer itself and took positive and negative and turned them over and put them back in. What this allows you to do is really mix the subwoofer for different spots in a boat. If you're sitting at the helm and the subwoofer is over in the ski locker, sometimes by the time that base is hitting your location at the helm and bouncing off of different surfaces, that sound at the helm might actually be out of phase with the mid ranges that you have around around you at the helm. So by inverting the subwoofer phase, it actually can give you better mid bass, a better blend between sub and mid bass um, integration at different locations in the boat. So we've actually found that, you know, one position might sound really good at the helm, but another position might actually couple better behind the boat. So it gives you flexibility to um, just invert the phase on the subwoofer on the fly, as opposed to just picking one phase and leaving it. Um, why we call it a zone line driver is, uh, in a boat, you need a lot of voltage to, to combat, um, noise in a boat. A boat doesn't have a large metal shield around it like a car does. So boats, a lot of times become like radio stations, the gauges, everything in the boat is sending off RF information. So what we really encourage with our systems approach is drive it hard from the front. The, the ZLD can do up to nine volts of output. So bring your your source in, it could be the factory radio, it could be one of our Bluetooth adapters. Bring the audio into this, drive hard from the front, 
to the amplifier so that any noise that would get injected into an RCA cable is so far down in the noise floor that it doesn't matter by the time it hits the amplifier. If you were to have a low signal at the front and then gain up at the back, and you gain up at the back of the system at the amplifier, you're also gaining up the noise. Signal. The noise. Yeah. So any noise that gets injected into an RCA, an RCA can act like an antenna, especially a twisted pair RCA that doesn't have a shield on it. If it's just uh, two wires twisted in a, in a jacket, those can act like, like an antenna, and at the amplifier, if you turn the gains up there, it's going to amplify those noises that are coming into your RCA cables. So that's the that's the whole philosophy behind uh, our zoned line drivers: drive hard from the front, and so the, any noise that gets injected is hidden in the noise floor, so the amplifier can do its job of amplifying music and not amplifying noise. It it just seems like one of those pieces that you almost, you know, if you're going to invest the money and have the multi amplifiers and have the subs and have you know at least two zones minimum uh it's almost a no brainer to have that right there yeah it's a yeah, funny it's not, an exp not an expensive piece either it's only $400 retail in canada it's not an yeah. expensive piece to add into the system it's it's the use case for this is, is unique because we have a lot of we have a lot of customers that buy a boat every year or every couple of years they'll buy it and then they'll flip it and we've got a lot of customers that will have had ZLDs in the past and they'll get their new boat that has all of the fancy uh, touchscreen digital integration. And they're like, well, I'm going to try to just integrate my stereo just into the factory stuff and not do a ZLD this year. And I'd say most of those systems, a uh, customer that's had a ZLD in the past, will do a factory integration on it. They'll love it. They get all their touchscreen. And within a month or two, they'll come back and they're like, I have to have a ZLD. Because um, once you've had one of these and you have individual control of all the zones and you get that huge amount of voltage at the front of the system, and the once, knob. You've, once you've seen how that works in the knob, it's hard for you to go back. So a lot of guys will take the fancy integration and bring it into, this has two inputs on it. It's got a main input and an aux input. So you could bring our Bluetooth in on the aux input. You could bring the factory radio in. Um, the factory integration in on the main input. So you can kind of have the best of both worlds. If you still want to be able to change track and use all of your uh, integration, you can do that and drive it into the ZLD. And then if you just want the system to sound as good as it possibly can, you can come into it with a headphone adapter or you can come into our Bluetooth on a second channel and just really get the, the full experience of driving the preamp without anything else in the way. Sweet. Grant, uh, we've learned a lot so far in this session. We think we have maybe time for one more piece or one more category that we want to show. What would you like that to be? Yeah, let's uh, let's give a sneak peek of to uh, what's coming uh, in the not too near future. Um, we have some going back to the roots with uh, XL. We've got some car audio product coming. I gave you a couple of slides there to kind of give you a sneak peek. Uh, we've seen a big spike in this category of a shallow subwoofer in a very small enclosure that downfires. A uh, number of benefits to the the downfiring. Obviously, it loads up against the floor. Give you a lot more output but the other thing is people want room for groceries their hockey bags uh you know golf guilty clubs, as charged yeah my, my wife okay so straight up uh i want subs right great she's like as long as we can put the groceries and anything i want to put on top of it and i pretend it's not there you can do it that was you, legitimate her you know her mandate we'll get you one of these then because this this you can throw your groceries on top it won't damage the subwoofer that's and exactly it yeah yeah, we got two versions of this coming. We have a, a passive version where you can add your own amplification. Uh, the driver is a dual voice coil sub, so any two ohm load you want to uh, run on the subwoofer is fine. And then we have an active version, which is actually shown on the screen, which will have an integrated 250 watt RMS amplifier, uh, high level, low level input, and also oh, have the uh, remote base yeah. control. Perfect. And then the, the outside is, is carpeted, and then we have a unique textured finish on the front, the gray section that's shown there on both of these. This is a dual 10 or dual 12. We call it the party pack version. Um, we'll have these also as a passive uh, dual 10, dual 12 subwoofer enclosure, and we'll also have them uh, in the official party pack uh, with the 600-watt amplifier, which will be separate, but a 600-watt RMS amplifier to go with it. And, uh, you know, these are both vented enclosures, so you're going to get lots of output. Uh, no, Bill's done no, Grant, some really I, good tooling on it. I was just going to say, you, you just took the words out of my mouth. I think I mentioned this the first time I saw these things. These don't look like you're running the mill, you know, two subs in a box, right? The different no, textures, did. the milling, the logos around the, you know, the there's just, 
a real nice touch of design on here. T so. Typical Exile fashion. They don't want to just take a product and peel and stick and, and stick whatever logo you want to brand on it from from a, a, the same factory. Um, Bill and his even team. even the vent isn't a rectangle. Right. You know, it's it's got it's a special it's shape. To it. Yeah, yeah I'm, it's I'm it's just like these are little things, right? But. Absolutely. Yeah, so cool. a lot of a lot of design design engineering went into it. Uh, even the gasket around the woofer, we mm -hmm. custom tooled that up. Uh, the cone itself has got the Exile X embedded into the cone. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, well, there'll be a very subtle Exile logo on the front of it there. So we don't want to overbrand it um, with you know big bold uh, embroidery on it. So uh, dual ten, dual twelve, and then we're also going to do a single ten and single twelve uh, enclosure as well. So. Nice start to getting uh, the car audio product back. Uh, oh, the what's this? What's this? Oh, uh, we got a full line of amplifiers to go with it because that's uh, that's a picture of the uh, 500 watt four channel amplifier, uh, the same chassis size as the 600 watt mono, and then we'll have a um, larger uh, thousand watt mono block amplifier. It looks exactly the same, just a little bit longer on the extrusion, and then we're also going to have a five channel amplifier. I believe it's 100 by 4 and 400 by 1 on the sub channel, uh, also in the family. So, is it four amplifiers or five? I can't remember. I think there'll be five amplifiers in the lineup. Uh, you know, five channel amplifier, four channel amplifier, two channel, uh, multiple mono blocks. Oh, yeah, it's super exciting to get back. Yeah, it's super exciting to get back to car audio. No, so, we're pretty excited about this. Two questions, two questions real quick. Yes. Number one, does that logo illuminate in the middle? Yes. Yes. So that logo, when it's turned awesome. off, that blue, that blue section there becomes white. Uh, it's a white back. It's a white plastic. Um, the black section you see on there is actually what we call an electroform process. It's the same process that we use in the back of our tower speakers. So it's an aluminum. Um, it's an aluminum inlay. And then we laser etch the logo on there, the Exile logo. So kind of it's a piece of jewelry on top of the amplifier we spent actually one of the hardest parts of this amplifier was developing that badging on the top um to have kind of a dual illumination and then to look really good even if the amplifier is turned off it's just sitting on a display we really wanted that to be kind of a a piece of jewelry that somebody could look at and go this was not just silk screened on top of the amplifier this was uh Tooled in, tooled in, in 3D. Yeah. Uh, luckily, because we do all our own industrial design, industrial design really is kind of um, an area that we're super passionate about. And that's what we've, we've done with these. It's an entry-level product. We're really trying to, to give good value with all of this, but we didn't want to give good value without bringing innovation along to the ride. And so that's what you're seeing is all the little subtle details don't necessarily add cost. Um, they add man hours on our side from trying to be innovative to really give it a, a very unique, uh, bespoke kind of feel. But the value for the end customer is going to be there because once we've tooled the product, it doesn't really make it any more expensive. So what is the timeline on this grant for Canada? Uh, I believe this, the subwoofer product will be uh, probably here first. We're hoping uh, probably June-ish. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not going to say production June now. or late June. It's it's a matter of when we can get a container out of China to get it to get it here. But sure, yeah. uh, hopefully those will hit in June. I believe amplifiers are probably June, July as well. Now, and, um, uh, is this a full line? Are we doing full range speakers as well on, on this line? Uh, baby steps, man. We're, we're, we're doing subwoofers, I, amplifiers, I gotta potatoes. Ask. I got to yeah, ask. Yeah, yeah. I got to no, ask. No, uh, it's it's on the it's on the drawing board for I know Bill and his guys are working on some industrial design and and sourcing different materials but yeah it'll eventually so, be a full line of products. So Bill, we're gonna have you back in about nine months with like a twelve channel multi channel with DSP built in. Oh, uh, we got all sorts of fun stuff going on. Yeah, I mean, this, <laughs> the the most exciting thing about our partnership with friends is you know we're really able to do some of the things that have been kicking around in our head for a while and we now have a team that's going to help us you know really be able to bring it to the market um some of our crazy ideas that just you know haven't seen the light of day are starting to see the light of day so yeah from an innovation standpoint everything we do we're always going to try to bring innovation to the table um but even at the entry level product, when we look at these base packs, we've had a blast doing this project because we haven't done, you know, car subwoofers for a while. And we're seeing that, I mean, it's been a long time since I've heard kids rolling through the neighborhood with subwoofers pounding. Like when I was in high school, that's all you heard. Every kid oh, had yeah. a subwoofer yeah. in, their box, mm -hmm. in their car. And I'm starting to hear that again. You know, it's been 10 years since I really heard subwoofers kind of rolling down my neighborhood. 
And the high school kids in my neighborhood, I don't know if it has to do with, with COVID and they've got some extra money and they're spending their time on their cars, but I'm starting to hear more and more subs kind of pounding in the background. So base is the area that we're really focusing right now is getting the party packs out there because we want it to be accessible. We want the dealers to have something easy they can mm -hmm. sell a consumer and also bring you know some innovation to the table. So when you throw this in the back of your hot hatch, it doesn't look like this, um, you know, generic box. It looks like no, it, it looks it modern. Looks like you've got a custom install. All right. Um, by just buying a, a free kind of package that we call party pack. So mm -hmm. we're really excited about. It. That's why we're only focusing on base for the moment. If we think that's where the huge opportunities are, we will have multi-channel amps to do the full range. Um, coax and components they'll come. Um, nobody. Because really I mean, obviously, you guys don't. No, but you guys yeah. know how to yeah. make speakers. So I'm sure you're going to bring something yeah. different to it. There's yeah. so many coaxials out there. I mean, nobody really needs another three and a half and four inch coaxial out there. Those are kind of like still the whole type of products. We eventually will have a full lineup, but right now we're focusing on the where we think the bigger opportunities in the market are. We think it's we we can bring our innovation to the the party pack side of it. My we're last corner the market on a four by ten. We're going to corner the oh, market. Oh, four, four by ten. Tens. Is that what you're going to yes. do? Yes. All yes. right. Yes. Perfect. Uh, my last question for Bill. I'm going to let you go. Uh, are those uh, subwoofers going to be available uh, standalone or only in the box uh, preloaded? Both. 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 Okay. Very cool. Yeah. And the sizes will be ten twelves. Are we going lower or higher? Right now, just tens ten twelves. Twelves. Ten to twelves. Okay. Yeah. If, if 15 well, start making a comeback, we'll make a 15 inch version. But uh, I haven't seen 15 have uh, 15 inch have any momentum for years. It's it's I hard to say. It. Car audio is car audio is having a little bit of a renaissance period right now. We're not I sure know. what's coming. Love so it. it's interesting. It's interesting. Love it. Bill, can't thank you enough. Thank you for sharing your wisdom and your knowledge, and continue Thanks, innovating, Bill. sir. We appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. It's been a blast. Good to see you. Take care now. Bye. G money. Should have put yes, that sir. as a title, Grant G. Money McFadden. That's really what your title name is, you know. Uh, you want to hear my two cents? Yeah, let me hear. So, first of all, I think you guys have a really—I mean, you already have a good, a really impressive portfolio in Marine. Now you've just like kind of rounded out the entire offering, if you know what I mean. Uh, I think yeah, Exile brings yeah. a lot of expertise and a lot of like engineering and, like Bill mentioned, in, uh, industrial engineering and design. To their product, which I yeah. really stands out. So that's my yeah. I think uh, my top to bottom, of, top to bottom of Marine, we can pretty much handle all your needs. You know, um, whether it's entry level or flagship, rip your face off stuff, we can we can do it with our arsenal of products, absolutely. And then uh, with the Exile product, we one of the things I want to get across is the profitability for dealers is huge. Um, you know, we're we're not selling this to every Tom, Dick, and Harry. We are going to be. Uh, limiting the distribution on the product uh, so that we can maintain the pricing integrity of it. So very, very, very cool. Line. I can't talk enough about that 360 turn. Mm -hmm. That is, that's money right there. And that, and you know what? Those, those, you know, when you get the product in hand, come back. We'll talk. Let's take a look at those party packs, the subwoofers, the amps. Let's see what that's all absolutely. about. Absolutely, absolutely. We'd love to be back and see that when we've got actual real product in our hands. G money, always a pleasure having you, man. Thank you for joining awesome, us, Ben. Thanks, Ben. Take care. Take man. care. There you have it, guys. Exile Audio back in Canada through Trends Electronics, starting off first with their full marine lineup. And uh, as you saw, we got a little bit more of a sneak peek on the car audio stuff that's coming down the pipe. Um, hope you enjoyed this episode. Uh, lots more connected coming your way. We've got three other episodes next week. All Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays is when you want to tune in during your lunch hour to get your learn on. Hey, thanks for joining us today. That's it for me. I'm your host, Ben Roos, CMA Connected, presented by SiriusXM. Until next time, we connect. Mm -hmm.